All right, so we're going to look at a modern metal riff today. This comes from the 5-4 piece from my 10 odd meters you need to know. This was number eight. Um, this is a seven string riff, and I tune my seven string guitar as drop A. So the low B is down a full step, and that gives you like a low drop D style power chord. Um, a couple of things on this riff we need to look at. First is the rhythm. So if you watch my 10 on meters you need to know video, this is number eight, and the rhythm goes two groups of two and then two groups of three, and these are eighth notes. So you'd have one and two and three and a four and a one and two and three and a four and a, or you could do one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. And this is pretty quick, so those are gonna fly by a little bit faster, but really how I'm feeling this rhythm is as four beats, and the last two beats are a little bit longer, right? So the first two beats are quarter note beats. They're two eighth notes long. The last two beats are three eighth notes long, so they're dotted quarter note beats. And that would be like, da, 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 da. So that's how I'm feeling the actual beats themselves. And then within that, you know, there's some 16th notes happening, as well as mostly eighth notes in this guitar riff. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at the guitar riff itself. Now the first thing to look at on this riff is the notes that I'm playing. And I'm getting these notes from an interesting scale and it's called the harmonic major scale. Now if you're familiar with a major scale, which most of you should be, I'm gonna play G major. And all I'm gonna to do to get harmonic major is I'm gonna take the sixth, in this case E. I'm gonna flat that, I'm gonna make it E flat. And we'll get this scale. And that's harmonic major. And harmonic major to me is like the slightly more uplifting cousin of harmonic minor. Still has that exotic sound, but maybe a little bit less dark. Really cool scale, um, usually found in jazz. So it's not something you're going to come across too often in rock and metal. But a lot of times with these sorts of things, I like to reach for some slightly different sounds to see if I can come up with something that's maybe a little bit different than what you traditionally hear. Now, what I actually did in this riff was to use a mode of the harmonic major scale, and I use the second mode. So what I'm gonna do is take that G harmonic major scale, and I'm just gonna start it on an A. There's a lovely sound there. <laughs> so if I do the same scale starting from A, that's the scale that I'm using for this riff. And what this scale is, is a Dorian scale, or a Dorian mode with a flatted fifth. Dorian would be like this. And the flatted fifth. Really cool sound. It's a little bit darker than the um, just straight up harmonic major because it's more of a, a minor sound. Uh, and I'm gonna play that in two octaves here and I'll put the tab on the screen for this. That's like a three upper string shape there. Um, so let's take a look at the riff and kind of how I use this scale. All right, so we're gonna split this riff into two sections. And these are both two measures long. The first one here is a lot of low power chords and some chugging, and that's gonna sound like this. So what I got here right off the bat is this tritone chord. Sixth fret on the low A string, and fifth fret on the E string. Crunchy. I couldn't do just a straight power chord there because that didn't actually fit within this particular scale and I was trying to stick pretty strictly to this scale because I like the sound of it. So that, and then we get these six 16th notes, palm muted on the note C, third fret of the A string. Then we get a power chord on the fifth fret, D. Hit it once and then palm mute it once and then do the exact same thing power chord on the second fret. So the first measure looks like this. Faster. And the second measure is exactly the same except for on those last two chords, instead of doing a held note that's not palm muted, I'm gonna do three palm muted eighth notes. I'm trying to get a really deep sort of genty chug on these. So that second measure would go and the two measures together slowly. Like. And 
and up to speed. The second half of this riff is based off the low open A string, which is our root note. And what I'm doing here is playing a diminished seventh arpeggio built off that note. And that is found right in this scale. Another reason why this scale is really useful for writing riffs because uh, diminished seventh chords are really, really common in heavier music. And here's what the first measure looks like, and we'll talk about it. So we have these minor thirds, but they're split up over an octave. So it's this shape here, like 12th fret on a low A string, 15th fret on the next A string. And what I do is I take that shape, and I slide with my pinky here on the A string to different versions of that shape. And that works really well because you can slide up or down three frets with a diminished seventh arpeggio. You know, if you're comfortable with the sort of Ving Ve Malmsteen idea of taking a diminished seventh chord and kind of moving it around the, that stuff. It's, you can do it with riffs as well. So that's what I'm doing here. Trickiest thing here is just being able to slide to the right note with your pinky, especially this first long slide, because it goes from 15th fret all the way to the ninth fret. All right, that's quite the stretch. All right, so just focus on trying to land on that and you should be good to go. Now, the second measure takes the same idea, but first we have probably the trickiest part from this whole lick, and that's this fast 16th note octave tapping thing. So I hit the low A string, hammer on 12th fret, tap 24th fret, pull off to 12th fret, back to open. And this is all happening at 16th note, so. It's a little bit weird, and it's especially weird to do after doing the slides, because you have to kind of track where you are, especially with your tapping finger. So if, let me do that a little bit quicker. It's hard to do it slow because the notes kind of like ring weird, but up to speed on its own is not too bad, but putting it in with the rest of the riff is tricky. So I'm going to do that first measure of this second half here, do the little tapping part, just to see how it works to go into it. All right, up to speed. One more time. All right, that's the idea. And so from there, I'm going to finish off the riff by doing more of these sliding third, minor third ideas. And But instead of like I did in that last measure, what I'm going to do is actually slide on the low string. And that looked like this. Just kind of a nice little variation on the first part. So we're still getting that sliding and the diminished sound, but I'm changing it up a little bit. And that's kind of what I like to do. If you notice this riff, the first half the second measure there is a little bit different than the first. And here in the second half, the second measure is also a little bit different than the first. And they're they're related, but I'm trying to just keep it a little bit interesting and change things up a little bit. So let me play the second half here slowly. Right. Hope you guys enjoyed that riff lesson. If there's other riffs or guitar parts from the music I post in the prog school that you want me to cover, just let me know. I want to do more of these lessons to kind of supplement um, the things that I can't cover in the main lessons because I'm doing so many things there, kind of talking about the overall picture. I, I don't get to talk about the guitar specific stuff so much. So I want to do some guitar focused lessons and maybe some production sort of lessons as well. Um, I'll also cover some of the stuff on my live stream. So if you have questions, you can message me with them or you can jump on my live stream and ask me there there's a link below to pick up tabs for this tune as well as all of the other tunes for the 10 odd meters you need to know video um, although two of them had didn't have guitar so there's eight tunes that have have tabs for them um, if you want to kind of dig a little bit deeper into a few of the guitar parts from these tunes and i hope you guys enjoyed that and as always stay proggy <laughs>